This week we're up on big green fishing and you know the cool part about fishing this lake is that when we come out in the morning we start off fishing usually lake trout and then what we'll do is we'll switch to fishing northerns after that and then after that we'll do some bass fishing and probably some bluegills and crappies. It's a real versatile lake you know you can come out here and do whatever you want. Um, that's kind of the nice part about it as far as what you want to fish for um, and you can see just to start the morning off when you come out on this lake, besides all the rods we have in the rod storage, we have a pile of rods sitting out here because there's so many different techniques that we use out here. And it's, a, it's probably one of my favorite places to come because there's not too many places where you can come in Wisconsin and jig for lake trout on inland body of water. So that's what we're going to start today off. And most of the time what we do is we use our locator, the hummingbird, and what I do is I'll put the Tarova down and I'll just go real slow until I start marking the lake trout and when I start marking them then I hit the spot lock again you know we talk about that spot lock it is such a key feature in that trolling motor I can't see ever living without that thing because it makes my job so easy so what I'll do is once I mark a couple of lake trout I hit the spot lock and we'll sit there and hover over the top of them and work them them lake trout you know I've learned this a long time ago out here when you're fishing break green when you catch a lake trout a lot of times I'll look for three or four lake trout together and when you catch one most of the time I'll just, once we get the fish in the boat and re release it, what I'll do is I'll just move up to the next spot and try to, instead of trying to catch the other two or three fish that are down there because they've spooked pretty easy. So, you know, don't waste too much time once you catch a fish or if all of a sudden you mark a few lake trout and you can't catch them, I give them 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then I move on to the next spot, you know, to where I'm marking another pot of fish, and I keep moving like that, but that's the key. But it's, it's a lot of fun when you're pulling these fish out of anywhere from 80 to 120 feet of water. So uh, we got special guests today. We got our friend Mitch and my buddy Cam, which we all know Cam is definitely the number one fisherman in the boat. We'll see what he can do today. got there you just I didn't even know you were even down to the bottom oh Cisco whoa hey Cisco I haven't eaten Cisco in a long time <laughs> you know this is this is what the lake trout feed on right there that's a Cisco it's another thing that we'll be doing a show with later on uh, almost right around Christmas when they come up to spawn but that's what the, the we're marking them you, you, I'll show you on the locator and uh, there's no doubt that that's the number one forage for lake trout right there. Cisco kid! You know a lot of these are Cisco up into here, but the lake trout will actually mix right in here. Like these, here's some Lakers right here. Um, this is Lakers down on the bottom. Could be a lake trout way up here. But you'll see right now we're in 140 foot. The Cisco are running at about 100 foot. Now these are probably lake trout up there too. So basically that's what we're doing. And then when you know we've got three of us fishing in the boat, what we do is we layer our lines. We've got one guy right tight to bottom. We've got one guy that's you know right at about 100, and then I got somebody you know like Cam is fishing up at about 80 foot. So you can see you want to cover the whole water column. These are definitely lake trout. You can see how big the hooks are on the hummingbird right here. Yep, and you can definitely tell that Cisco. Look how high that Cisco is. You know you're looking at about. 30 feet of Cisco in, in some of them spots right there. That's a the lake or a small one for sure. See, now you got, when I get us, when you get a small one, you just wind nice, nice and slow. You can just flip him right up. You can tell it's a small one just because it doesn't have the rod bent over. And I like to go nice and slow so you can release them. There you go. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah, he just swung at the bait. Now watch this because he wound slow. Watch how fast this fish, you can, they are releasable. Now watch that. Now watch him. Boom, watch. There you go, see him? Boom, just like that. Now that's the key when you're fishing out here so you don't kill them fish. When you're fishing in, the, in this deep water is when you get a small one on, you know, just slow your, your, your speed of, you know, when you're winding, you're, you wind them up nice and slow and then their air bladders aren't gonna blow up and they're releasable.
Here we go. I finally got one. I don't think it's a real big one. And I think it's about the same as the one that Mitch just caught. Let's see here. I'm going to slow him way down. You got one too? Oh, we got each other. Yep, see, again, small lake trout. Oop, hang on a second. And the nice part about it, when you slow down, oops, little guy. <laughs> yep, here he goes. Oop, right straight down. You see that? Oh, this is about 900. 62 casts without a fish. Oh, uh, without a bite. I blame it on bad guys. Oh, he's got it. Nope, here he is. Here you go, Cam. There you go. Start winning, start winning, start winning. What do you got, Cam? Bring him up, buddy. Pike, there he is! All right, Cameroni, got a pike. Boy, I tell you, usually them pike, when they grab it, they really go with that, that big time. Look how pretty them fish are on this lake. They got great color. Got one going here, what I'm just gonna feed it for Cam. And with a circle hook, you kind of just sweep, missed him. You know, we just missed one on that, and boy, you can sure tell that was a pike. Look what he did to that sucker. You know, what we're doing here is we've got about a six foot leader, and I'm using 30 pound fluorocarbon on here, and I've got a circle hook, a uh, number six circle hook on here with a small bead on it, and basically just hooking that sucker through the mouth and just pulling them real slow with the Tarova at about just under a mile an hour. And that works out really good. And just trying to, you know, like I say, I'm going from 16 out to 30 and back around, going over some cribs and trying to work some of the weed edges. The weeds this year aren't near as thick as they usually are. Got one going here again. Now I'm gonna let them take it a little bit. See, I like to let the, the line go back like that. There, oh, a nice fish. There you go, nice fish. There's a nice fish. Good job, buddy. All right. Keep her going, Cam Man! What do you got? What, ooh, that's a nice pike. Real nice pike. Ooh, nice fish. Nice fish, Cam! There we go. Oh, bad net job, but I saved the day. <laughs> ah, Cam! Good job, man. That's a little bit better one. Now look at that circle hook. That's the nice part about a circle hook, and he popped right out right there. Cam Man! Gotta love it. Oh. He's gone. Nice job, buddy. All right, that's what I like that's to see. Scary. That was cool. <laughs> nice job. Oh, big fish. Real big fish. There you go, buddy. Big, big fish. This is a nice one. Got her in there? That's a nice fish. Take it easy with him. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Nice job. Keep, keep the reel turning. There you go. You might make a run at the boat. Back up. Back up a little bit. Dude. Just keep reeling. Keep your eyes on the fish. Don't stop reeling. Don't stop the hook, whatever you do. Because that's the circle hook. Don't stop. Just keep going. Nice fish. Nice pike, real nice pike. Nice pike, there you go. Woo hoo, buddy, all right, woo. That's what we're looking for. That is a nice, nice, look at the size of that pike. Was that exciting? That, I mean, that reel just took off and went like crazy and sweeping that rod, that was perfect. Boy, you did a great job of fighting them. There you go, Cam, nice fish. Another nice fish, boy, that one's really got that rod boulder. Keep your rod up high, keep reeling, keep reeling. Good job, man. Rod up. 
<laughs> Look at that smile on his face. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what it's all about. Hey, I was uh, this spring I was on Winnebago with this guy. He absolutely whooped me. Oh, that's a big fish. Look at that one. That is a nice fish out there. This kid can fish, I'll tell you that. He whooped me this spring bad on Winnebago on my home water. You know, I don't know about that. Maybe it's perfect opportunity to, to maybe get you back a little bit. Oh, nice fish. Here we go. Oh, whoa, Cameroni! Woohoo! Gotta love that, I'll tell you that. You know what? Life doesn't get any better, does it? I'll tell you that. That's four in a row. Woo! You were before you were missing a few, but now you're on fire. And again, that circle hook, you guys, look at that. Look how easily that hook came out of that fish. That's why when you're using circle hooks, make sure that you keep the tension on the rod at all times and don't set the hook, just kind of swing the hook. You wanna, you're doing a great job. Wanna hold them up again right there? Look at that, man. That is absolutely awesome. Hey, you know what you gotta do when you catch a pike? You don't wanna kiss them because they got teeth. You gotta eat the weeds that you just get. <laughs> look at the, how pretty these fish are and look at the, the girth they have and how solid they are. This is really a really fertile fishery here. These fish got so much to eat. Okay, we got another one going. We didn't even get that one back in the water and all of a sudden things are really lighting up. And again, you know, I'm just waiting for him to pull on it. There you go, Cam! Another one! Oh my gosh, Cam, this is, this is crazy. I am loving this big time. Another nice fish. Oh, man, he threw that sucker. Did you see that? Oh, Cameroni! Woo! We are on fire now. Nice job, buddy. Oh, man, that is so awesome. Look at that. Yes, indeed. You know, this is what I use when we're fishing pike out here on, on Big Green or anywhere. And it works good for walleyes, it works good for bass. Pretty much anything live bait rig is what it call, it's called. I've got a, a one ounce weight on here and I've got 30 pound test fluorocarbon. And what I do is I like to use a long leader out here because the water's really clear. So, and I like to put a bead, this is another key thing. Now what I've, I've got some fire line on this rod right here and I use a bead so what happens otherwise, a lot of times that sinker will slide down into the swivel and it'll get stuck there and it won't be free to, to, to go out when you want to release it when you got a fish working it so he doesn't feel the weight. So basically what I have, again, I've got 12 pound test fire line, I've got a 30 pound test fluorocarbon leader and you can see how long that leader is in here. I'm using a good five and a half, six foot leader and I don't use any steel out here. It's all mono fluorocarbon because these fish, they see it, it's so clear. And usually 30 pound will hold pretty much anything. I'm using a number six circle hook. And remember, don't set the hook. Just sweep the rod and keep it tight. I use a Palomar knot, you know. I just clinch it down. I'll show you real quick how a Palomar is. You know what, I'll cut the line. It's the best knot to use, especially when you're using super braids or you're using fluorocarbons like this one. Okay, and basically, what I do with the Palomar is I go through the loop like this. I hope you guys can see this real good. Okay, I go through it one time like this, okay? And then what I do is I come right back around. I'll turn the hook, come right back around. Remember, I'm 52 years old, so just turned 52. My eyes aren't quite as good as they used to be. So what I have here, okay, basically it's a real simple way to tie it. So I've got the line going through both ends. Now all you do there is tie it into a knot, okay? See, I'm tying it into a knot, running, running it back, so I just ran it into a knot. Now the loop right here of the knot, I take the hook and I go back through like this and then I clinch it down. And I'm telling you, it's one of the best knots there is, especially for super braids or when you're using fluorocarbon. I've got that circle hook, as you can see, and I showed you before how I was hooking the sucker. And now, you know, I'll just cut the tag end off here. And about, when I use a one ounce 
walking sinker and I use a one ounce because if you double it up, let's say I'm in 10 feet of water and I wanna, or I'm, excuse me, I'm in 20 feet of water, or if I'm, let's just say this, I'm in 30 feet of water, I'm seeing the fish at 20 feet, what I do is I drop it down to 40 foot. Now 40 foot of my line counter is gonna put, with a one ounce weight going just at a mile an hour or under, it's gonna put that bait right at 20 foot. Even though I've got a line counter on here, I know it, but sometimes it depends on a line counter how full you have the spool as far as how accurate it's gonna be. So always try to keep your line counter as full as you can because then it's the most accurate when the, when the spool is full. Once you start getting down there, it really changes the distance when you start letting out. It's not so crucial when you're in you know, 10, 20, 30 feet. When you get into the 16, 80 feet, it really makes a big difference. I like to do this. I let my line out and basically I get it to the, the depth I want and then I'll do is I'll open it up and I just leave the clicker on and that's how we know when you get a bite because all of a sudden you just hear that. So in the fish, there's not a lot of tension there. So what I do right away is I run up front, if it's an up front rod, and I take it off and I just free spool it, free spool it, and I give them usually about six, seven seconds. And then what I do is I close it up and I let the rod come back. And as it comes back, then I just sweep it forward. Don't set the hook, just give it a nice sweep and keep the line tight. You know, and what we're doing here, you guys, is we're working the weeds this year aren't, don't come out as far as they normally do. A lot of times you can get weeds out into anywhere up to like 28 feet. This year, because of the cold summer, we, the weeds are out to about, in a very sparse areas, not like normal again, usually there's weeds everywhere. The weeds are coming out to about 16 to 18 foot. So I'm trying to stay right in that, that 16 to 22 foot break. I'm kind of going out and coming back, coming out, coming back, and I'm using my remote on my Trova here just to kind of run me back and forth all the time and working them again at about mile an hour. Okay, tuck hook. Not so hard next time. There you go, nice job. You got him, keep, don't one hook set. Keep your rod up, nice fish, another nice fish. Cam, you are on fire. Oh, that's a beaut, look at that one. Holy moly, <laughs> look at that fish. That is a very, very, very nice bite. You know, Big Green is an absolutely awesome body of water, real clear water most of the time. Um, it's a big recreational body of water because it's a great lake to ski on and, and sail and you know, there's a lot of boat traffic and some people might look at that as a negative thing, but I'm gonna tell you, when you're fishing pike, it's actually a pretty positive thing. I don't know if you guys caught it, but when we really had our hot streak today, there was a lot of boats around us pulling tubes and skiing. And what that actually does is it spooks a lot of the smaller fish, the panfish, you know, like the perch and the bluegills and the crappie and that's what a lot of these pike feed on and we were just going right through where them guys were were tubing and skiing and that's when we were picking up the pike and actually you think about that you know that the, the boat traffic scares all the smaller fish out of the weeds and scare moves them around and the pike to actually take advantage of that in the ambush the bait as it's coming through so don't let that deter you when you do see water skiers in tubers that you think that the fish aren't going to bite out here. These fish are conditioned to having a lot of boat traffic on them. So that's just, you know, another key thing to remember here on Big Green. Okay, sweep them. There you go. Keep, keep her on, keep her on. You got him. Nice job. Nice job. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. You got a double. Mitch, take this, take this one. Come, come to the back. Come over here. Keep, keep it on, keep it on, Cam. Keep it on, faster. Oh, look at this fish up there. Look at the size of that fish. We got a double. Cam. Mitch, Mitch, hang on, let me get him. Oh, look at the size of this one. Look, watch, watch, he's in the motor, he's in the motor. Oh my gosh. Hey, Cam, keep it on, keep it on. Hey, my Cam, keep it on. No, you know yeah. something? Hey, I just want to tell you guys something. That was the last two suckers we have left. Now we get to go try to find my fish, the lake drone. 
Hang on, there's a third one. Hang on. No, hang on. Take just take the net. Let me hook. Let me hook it. There's a third one. Here we go. There's never. All right. Wow. Keep going. Okay, I'll net that one too. Hang on, them rods, Mitch. This is unbelievable, you guys. I haven't even gotten these fish out of the net yet. Oh, it's a big bass! Get him in. Here, get him in. Oh my gosh, look at that! No, that's what we call fishing. Look at that, you guys. Holy <laughs> come on. All three of these rods just went at the same time. Look at that. That's fishing big green, and I'll tell you. Whoa, what a wade! Yeah. What a finale! Yeah. All right, buddy. That's what life's about right there. I love it. We gotta get one more lake trout before we go in. So one decent lake trout. I got a lake trout, but I don't think it's very big, you guys. I'm whining real slow. I some marked a couple big ones, and boy, I can I cannot get a big lake trout today. You know, we had an absolutely fantastic day on pike, caught some nice bass too, but the lake trout thing has really kind of got me stumped today. But you know how it goes. Let this one go. See it now again. You'll see how winding them up slow. Watch them. See him kick out, boop, right straight, down he goes. Hey, we had another awesome day today. What a great experience, the, the things that we did today, all the pike we caught. Hey, I wanna thank Mitch and especially my good buddy Cam for the great day we had. And you know, always remember, it's a great day to be alive and it's my time. Dad, what are you doing? Hey, it was a tough day today fishing on Lake Winnebago, but I can't think of a better way to wind down and relax and sharpen my skills than reading the Badger Sportsman. It's a far from working experience.